world-renowned authority on employee engagement and recognition, Chester Elton, shows there is a proven way to retain and engage your employees and inspire all your people to higher performance. In his keynote presentations and training workshops, Chester Elton unveils the findings of one of the largest research studies ever undertaken, including interviews with more than 200,000 employees and managers. In high-energy, powerful, hilarious presentations, he offers leaders specific and practical ways to engage employees and build stronger cultures. Chester Elton is the author of several New York Times best-selling books that have been translated into 15 languages and are sold in more than 50 countries around the world. He has appeared on national television and radio programs and is often quoted in leading business publications. Here are just a few comments from recent keynote speeches and training workshops. The highest ranking session we have ever had. By far the best session of our entire conference. He offered practical ideas and exhilarating content. You did more in one hour to bring recognition to life than any of us could have done in months. An extraordinary day. Chester is a superbly gifted speaker who engaged the entire audience. General praise has no impact on people. Somebody comes into your workplace and he goes, hey, great job, you know, great job, hey, you great job. <laughs> you know, finger guns blazing, right? I mean, and, and, and they leave and what do you think, man? What, I, I have no idea what just happened, right? Specificity has great power. You say, hey, I really appreciate you staying late last night. Getting those invoices done, meeting the deadlines so we didn't have to pay the penalty. That's what we're all about here at our companies, on-time delivery and accuracy. We really appreciate your extra dedication. Whole lot different than, hey, you, great job. And why do you lose the best people? What's the main reason that people tell you they're leaving for? More what? Money, exactly right. Does anybody know what the average increase actually is in salary between jobs in North America? 10%. 10%. Actually, it's lower. 5% is the average annual increase between jobs in North America. So what does that tell you? People aren't leaving for money. They're leaving because of this staggering statistic. 79% of people who leave an organization cite lack of recognition. That's 8 out of 10 people. Lack of appreciation was their number one reason for leaving. Okay, your name is? Julie. Okay, okay. You're doing some stuff there. I'm coming in. Hey, uh, June, how's it going there? What are you up to? Uh, look, uh, Dan over in Accounts Receivable, he's told me you've been doing some good stuff. What, what have you been working on lately? Uh, I guess we had the highest numbers in the department. Oh, yeah, that kind of stuff. Hey, Dane, excuse me for just a sec. We want to interrupt you here. We've uh, gathered the whole crew around here. We've got a little award we want to present you. You know, uh, Dane's been working on the marketing project, as, as you all know. Pulled together a special team. You know, in our company, one of our core values is talking about communicating properly, making sure the right message gets out. And nobody exemplifies that better than Dane, you and your team. Anyway, uh, I just want to get you a little something there for that. I thought, well, yeah, what the heck, you know, Susan's been working hard. Let's, uh, let's give her something. Uh, so I got you this little thing here. I thought, man, maybe you'd like that. I didn't know, really know what you'd wanted. So, Hey, Gordy, uh, you want to get back to work, buddy? This has got nothing to do with you, okay? Yeah, right, buddy. Okay, we're on the clock, so break's over there, friend. And I know that he had to work late a couple of nights, probably missed some family outings. But it's that kind of dedication to the project and getting it delivered on time that is another one of our core values, on-time delivery and the right message. So we've got this award for you, Dane. It's a little something that we hope that when you look at it and when you see it on your desk and you use it, that you'll remember how much we appreciate you and your team and what you've done. Okay, anyway, you know, Gordy's kind of watching. Why don't I just slip this to you a little later in the parking lot? I'm going to leave about 6, okay? So I'll just see you there, okay? But, hey, you've been doing some great stuff, okay? Love you. Because it's individuals like Dane that make us the company we are today and going to make us a little better today than we were yesterday. So, Dane, to you and your team, thank you very much. Thanks. Hey. So people ask me, they say, look, I understand that being nice to people, you know, that's the civil thing to do, and my mom would be proud of me, but is there a business application? Well, I think we've, uh, we've debunked that right now. Does it make good business sense? Absolutely. Look at those numbers. They go from patient, patient satisfaction from the 45th percentile 
to the 99th percentile. Turnover is down. That's big money in turnover. And look at the bed vacancy from 14% to 3%. That if you treat people with dignity, if you honor what they do, if you get them emotionally engaged, you can become the best in your industry. You know, the award presentation is where it all comes together. This is where you do something public, you make a big deal out of an award, and you tie it to your core values. Let me tell you a great story about a, uh, a CEO in the Midwest who gives out super people awards when somebody's done something great. Now, he doesn't give out, you know, employee of the month awards. He gives out awards when he sees action happening. So he's walking through the plant uh, a few weeks ago, sees an employee who's doing something great, so he calls everybody together and he says, hey, everybody, today's super person is Kelly. Get up here, Kelly, and everybody cheers and they're gathered around in the workplace down where it's happened. And the CEO says, oh, wait a minute. He says, your award, Kelly, is in the refrigerator. So Kelly goes and gets his award out of the refrigerator, something that probably shouldn't be refrigerated, comes up on the stage, and uh, the CEO says, anybody know why Kelly had to get his award out of the refrigerator? And somebody says, is it because he puts parts in there now and then? And the CEO says, exactly right. You know, here on the factory floor, now and then I see Kelly going into the fridge. I think he's getting his lunch, but I asked him, and he says, no, no. He says, when it gets hot and humid, the parts kind of expand slightly. He says, when I put them together, there's some slippage. He says, I put them in the fridge for just a couple of seconds, and boom, they slide right together. He says, if I don't do that, I'm kind of worried about defects. Well, the CEO says, what's our core value around here, everybody? And everybody chants out, no defects. Well, the CEO says, isn't this great? Kelly has found a way to live our core value of no defects. Well, kind of step back for a minute and hear and think what's happening. You know, he's telling a story about an individual who's gone above and beyond. He's talking about the core value. He's doing it in a public setting. And he's given an award. And every time somebody goes to use that refrigerator to get their lunch out, they're going to remember what it takes to get recognized around here. It's no defects. It's living our core values. So they did this survey. 10,000 North Americans were surveyed by Cornell University, right? That's uh, when you kind of know you're overfunded. And they asked 10,000 Americans, do you know how to ride a bike? Not a percentage, but a number. How many? What do you think? What's your guess? 150? That's high. Five is high. Three. Three is right in. Mike, congratulations. Three. How did you come to that? When five was high, did you know it would be lower? Yeah. You know, you're, you're going to take home one of our valuable prizes here, the Recognition Toolkit. Give Mike a big hand. That's right. But what they really wanted to know is, how did you learn how to ride a bike? Think about it. You know, your dad puts you on the bike, he pushes you in, he's running next to you. And what's he saying? Hey, keep pedaling. Hey, you're doing great. Hey, you know, you missed the curve that time. Hey, it doesn't look like you'll need stitches for that one. You know what I'm saying? He's encouraging effort. And that's what informal recognition is all about, encouraging effort. That day-to-day, -day, a little pat on the shoulder, a little pat on the back, the little I love you. Now, there's a difference between rewarding results. And when you finally learn how to ride a bike, what's the reward? It's freedom, that's right. I'll be riding my bike all by myself today, right? And that's when you get the accomplishment, you get the results you want, you reward that. Now, managers get that mixed up. And again, come back to your communication strategy, right? If, if somebody's just given a lot of great effort but not getting the right results and you reward them anyway, what's that say? That results aren't important, right? In my department, all you got to do is look busy, baby. <laughs> You'll get all this stuff. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Or how about if you're just encouraging results? You know, you've got your group together. You've worked really late. You finally beat the deadline. You got the certification, whatever it might be. And then your reward is, great job. <laughs> it doesn't work, does it? Are people going to put forth that effort again for that kind of reward? Absolutely not. So the key is this. You want to encourage effort and reward results. Unleash the potential locked within your workforce. Chester Elton will change the way you manage people and give you indispensable tools to motivate and inspire your employees.